There you have it, folks. Sengukaku, Japanese maple. Collected two years ago, urban Yamadori. Cut back, let back bud and grow freely in this container. And this is the end of the first styling phase of this tree. From here, just like the rest, we're going to let this one grow freely this season. Uh, I'm going to feed it with some plenty of fertilizer, give it plenty of water. Um, this species does not like to be in full sun, so I have a spot on my bench that's going to be shade and sun. It'll get morning sun till about 10 o'clock, and then it'll be shade for the rest of, of the uh, day. Um, but it's not going to be shadowy shade. It's going to be indirect sunlight, I guess, is the best thing to say. Uh, we'll do a quick 360 of this one. I'm going to get it back out on the bench and uh, like the rest of them, we'll revisit this tree in, uh, in the summer after it's leafed out and see how she's doing. Um, I don't know how old a Japanese maple has to be before it flowers, but this one already does have flowers on it. The large wound down here that I'd cut, I counted the rings in it and there were 42 rings. I don't know if it when ring represents a year's worth of growth or not. Sometimes I can represent. Uh, sometimes I can put more than one ring on per growing period. But I did count 42 rings in this just this one large branch that was down here. Um, that doesn't reflect the actual age of the tree or anything. But you know, just to give you an idea of just this one branch here, um, the proposed age could be 40 or 42 years old on this tree. Maybe I'm not. I'm not real sure on that but um, that's what we have for right now hopefully this will back bud on these dormant buds up and down the branch areas or the, I should say the trunk areas it's a, it is a branch but now it's the main trunk uh, hopefully they'll back bud out and give me some more branches where I need them to be and um, like I said we will revisit this tree again in summer that's the proposed front that I have for the tree and Hopefully I covered a little bit more in depth for you the techniques that I utilize, um, the branch selection and why I choose the specific branches, a little bit more in depth on how I do my wiring. Another thing before I leave you I wanted to uh, demonstrate to you as well, um, just to give you an idea when you are wiring, uh, how far you can go with a branch. Um, this is a branch off the same tree that I've removed that I didn't need. What I typically do, um, instead of going and bending on these branches right away, just whole hog, I'll take a, a, dorm, a branch that I'm not going to use, I, that I've removed, and I'll see just how far these go before they break. That way, when I am doing the bending on these branches, I know how far I can take them before they're going to snap. And it does, and you, as you'll see as I demonstrate on this branch here, it doesn't take much. Um, here we go. It'll bend and bend and bend and then boom, snap. So I always gauge a branch based on where it is in the tree and I use an older branch like this and I'll boom. I mean you see how quick it is. It just will bend to a point and that's it. So. Always use a dead branch, or not a dead branch, but always use a branch that you remove off the tree, um, that you've removed recently off the tree that you're not going to use to determine how much bend you can get in it before it's going to reach its critical snapping point. Um, of course, the further down you go on this, the longer it takes for the branch to break. Of course, you can get more bend out of it that way. But you always want to go with the base where you remove it from because that's always where it's going to snap first. Um, so hopefully that was more in-depth and a little bit more helpful for anyone. Thank you for the feedback that I've already received. That's helped me a little bit on this tree to maybe give some more insight on what I do and the techniques I use. Not everybody's techniques are the same. Um, based on your climate area, your growing season, and the type of material you're working on will determine the different techniques. The ones that I utilize are pretty much standard for all deciduous trees. Uh, the timing is going to be based on your cl climate, your growing area, um, when, your buds ex when your buds start to swell, when they break, etc. Um, so hopefully you can take what I've shown here, apply it to your, your particular growing zone, 
and uh, have a little bit more success in the, this wonderful hobby. Thank you for watching.